Hello everyone, my name is Mitz, and here we're back with Phoenix Strike Attack of Court. Last time, basically, we heard from the bellboy all about the the ghost's identity, Thomas Maplethorpe. Hmm. Thomas Maplethorpe is the grandfather of Cedric, who accidentally killed his son, well, his grandson, Cedric's twin brother, and he killed himself. And he's supposed to be the one roaming these halls. Hmm. We still need to figure out how the go how the whole thing with comes into play. We learned this. Bellboy heard this from. Well, read it in a diary that was found on the first floor, presumably Cedric's old diary. Hmm. So I tried to deliver it back. Can we read it? An old looking diary details the gruesome story of the ghost to be taken back to room 101. Hmm. Guess we should go. I wonder if we're allowed to go to the first floor yet. No. Oh, yeah, the police are cornering it off, so we need to find, t find some time to get down there. What can we do in the meantime? Oh, okay. Uh, hi okay. Is Maya calling again? Or. Somebody's phone is ringing. Oh, it's not ours? Mr. Wright? That's my phone. I think it's behind this reception desk. Oh, okay. Ah, here it is. Quickly, quickly. Thank you. So check Maplethorpe here. Oh, are you? Suppose I better like. I suppose I better come along too. Very well, in that case, I'll meet you in the garden. Yes, the door is still stuck. What about lawyer? Is he allowed to? Do... He is. Oh, I'm guessing it's no. Yes, he's right here. Okay, see you in a minute. That was the prosecutor. So he says he and the police are finished the first floor. Oh, it's Brisbane. Oh, dang it. So I can investigate the first floor now? Indeed. I'll be going back to the police station with them, too. I'll be testifying in court tomorrow, and they wanted to question me. Huh. See you tomorrow, Mr. Wright. Huh. So I'll be cross-examining Mr. Maplethorpe tomorrow. Hmm. I wonder what he knows of the crime. I thought, like, Brisbane said, like, everyone had, like, the details. Like, you know, everyone's testimony sounded all exactly the same. Maybe Brisbane wants him to testify about the gun? Yeah. Maybe. I never did find the bullet, either. Yeah, so the bullet pistol definitely has to be the murder weapon, then. If there's, like, so much, you know, like, you know, so much evidence pointing to, like, you know, back and forth to which gun is the right one, right? Like, it's like leaving that up in the air is mystery, so obviously the flintlock pistol is it, right? I guess it's a matter of proving it is the murder weapon. Hmm. Well, time to go investigate the first floor. I wonder how it looks if it's all been under construction for so long. Okay, that's, this is all so... Foreboding. Oh, this place gives me the creeps. It's even colder here than it's than it is on the stairs. That's funny. Mr. Maplethorpe said the police were here. Yet there's not even the sound of a pin dropping. I was gonna try and find out where everybody <gasps> Phoenix wrong! Oh god. You're still up here. Brisbane! Actually that was me! Oh my god. It's just snow. You scared the life out of me. Okay, calm down. I never see you lose your rag when it's Brisbane. That's different. He. Snow, what are you doing? Oh, he, he is here. Oh, it's you. I was wondering when you run to check up on the first floor. Oh, wow. That was our agreement in court. <laughs> well, we're just on our way out. You can just stay if you want, but you'll only be wasting your time. Wait, wasting my time? How so? Look around you. There's nothing here. Uh, well, did you look in every single room? It appears that way. All we could find was... Look over here on the floor. What even is that? Is that more rubber scraps? Oh, God. Do we have another... <laughs> Someone was disguised as the ghost! Oh, nice! I can't, can, can you mimic a dead person's face? Can you... It's the latest evolution in ghost technology. Traces of some sort of gray powder. That's all we could find. Oh, it's a gunpowder? 
was a gun fired here? I mean, there was the hole in the floor. Well, the gun was fired on the first floor? Wait, but the elevator was broken. Wait, no. Well, they, they just they just could have taken the stairs. It just means literally anyone could have taken it, like, taken, like, gone down here with a flint like pistol and just... Well, and also that same old story as well. You know, ghost story. That, hmm. The pistol was loaded at the time. But, hmm. After that whole thing, I thought the family would just, like, throw it away. Like, maybe I would. It was probably me. Like, it went to that thing. That or, like, the, the pistols are, like, like a treasure of some sort for that family. But why load it again? Hmm. But hold on. I just thought of something. None of this matters to me. As long as you can't find any new evidence on this floor. I don't know why, but you smiling like this just just kind of unnerves me more than anything else in this whole game. <laughs> Not even this chilling atmosphere. The maid will be declared guilty. Oh boy, well, we just heard from Mr. Ripley that I'm she shot the gun. Wait, I, I, you didn't hear that from me. He's right. I have to find something on this floor. Maris will... Oh, okay. How do I know you haven't taken the evidence and hidden it away from me? Are you seriously suggesting that I'm lying? Here we go again. We're surrounded by officers, you moron! How could I steal anything? Maybe they're in on it. Oh, God. Okay, okay, I was just saying. Besides, if you're thinking that I'm some sort of... Whoa, okay, ladies, handbags away now, please. <laughs> Snow, the great ultimate mediator. Ah, uh, Brisbane, we need to get going. Don't forget that. Don't forget the meeting with the chief. <sighs> of course. Enjoy your aimless wandering around the first floor, Mr. Wrong. Snow, get the get the other officers. Let's go. See you later, mate. You can catch me at the precinct later. Oh, that's why. Hmm. So Brisbane couldn't find anything. Not that great powder is important. This place is even creepier that there's nobody here. Hmm. Should we look around here? Actually, can we go into the room 101? Yeah. Well, we can look at the gun part of the floor later. Oh, that music is so... Oh, melancholy. The police must have left the room the room doors unlocked in the investigation. This is my chance to return the diary. Hmm. Now, where did the bellboy say he found it? Oh, that's right, behind the dresser. Yeah, I was gonna say. Hmm. Let's just put it behind here and forget it never happened. There. All done. What? What's that? Something just fell a diary. What's this? A key? What could this be for? <gasps> Obviously, take it. Stealing is key. Literally. I suppose it wouldn't hurt to borrow it for a little while. Strange key. Huh. It was in Mabel Corp's diary. Right, now to get out of here before I'm caught. What you got there, boss? Oh, God, why are you here? Oh, you! Curtis, as always. You know the cops have finished up here, right? Uh, yeah, so? So? Why are you stupid around in here? Well, I have police permission to investigate here, unlike you. Uh, I'll, I'll call the cops and you... I am a cop. No, you're not! I think it's about time I asked you why you think you're involved in this case. Cop business. Cop business. Cop business. Not yet. The timing it right. You don't even know about the victim that much, do you? No. The victim? What do you know? And what he was involved in? You really have no idea? No? What the victim was involved in? The victim was involved in some sh like, you know, some s shady shit. Then why, why is he here? Why? No, I... You're not gonna tell me, are you? Run the button. Well, you don't, I don't even see a single button on there, so I'm, uh, screw that noise to me right now. You mean you got this whole case figured out? Almost. You gotta keep your snodgel in my business, boss. The coppers need to find out for themselves. God damn, it's still the lingo. I can't help but notice that you always refer to the police separately to yourself. You're not one of them, are you? 
look, legitimate or not, if you know anything about the case, you gotta tell the police. I mean, I, I mean obviously they're separate. Like, you literally said yourself, Phoenix. Uh, the badge is fake, so. Or maybe he is a cop and he lost his badge and he was tr and he found one in the trash. He's probably then he's more caught in the snow. Never mind. <laughs> and gumshoe combined. So, but yeah, I'm like with that. Look, if you got legitimate or not, if you know anything about the case, you gotta tell the police. I have a different agenda for the buttons. It's not the question. Well, at least the police officers have buttons in uniforms, like you. Mean. Look at your outfit. When you have a cuff button up, so. But your jacket is not. The detectives always have to have those snazzy jackets, and you don't. You're a terrible police officer. Too terrible. Cruel, I say. Too cruel. I got screwed now, shyster. My God. Wait, I need to ask you something. Quick. That hole in the floor of the victim's room. Was it there the whole time? I ain't gonna spill out, I know, but I will tell you this. The bullet hole's genuine. Mm. So that hole was made to time the crime. So definitely, it was from the floor below. Wait. So it was a freak accident? So it was either a freak accident or somehow... No, it has to be a freak accident then. How would you, how would you like, you know, have the right perfect positioning to like, kill someone from the next floor above? That must have just been... Yeah, it must have been pure luck. Wow. So the hole was made at the time of the crime. Wait, bullet hole? Look, when you figure this whole thing out, then we can have a talk. Now I got a vamoose. See you around. Okay, my voice is for you would go all over the place. Forget the murder. Terror Grease is the real mystery around here. So you confirmed the hole in the floor 206 is genuine evidence. And it was a bullet hole. What do you mean when he said the victim was involved in something? It, it, what's his agenda, if not the police? Huh. Terry Greason may be the shiftiest character I've met on this case so far. But I feel almost compelled to believe him. Hmm. I guess we're done in that room, then. Like, there must be something more on this floor, right? I mean, you said there was gunpowder on the floor. Traces of strange gray dust of powder. Whatever this stuff is. Yeah, maybe I'm just noticing it, hmm. Like, this whole hallway is like, you know, mirrored from the top floor, right? Yeah, I mean, like, the door is on the right side. Something about the spot doesn't seem right. I mean, it's mirrored? It's... wall? Don't tell me this hotel has secret passageways. Can you the window? Not even the sunlight can brighten up this corridor. Hmm. The door to room 105. What was the... Hold on, what was the number for... Oh, wait, I remember something. There was rooms across the hall from each other. Like, you know... We're talking to Vic Burrows, so... Let me go up. What was the... Hold on. I think I suddenly realized why the first floor didn't look right. About what? For I can see, the layout of this floor pretty much mirrors that of the second floor. And yeah, like, the door's on the left side, and, like... I... Wait, I'm not even remembering... I don't remember if I remember the hallway right. Hmm. Pretty much mirrors that of the second floor. So that section of the wall bothered me before. Oh. It's where room 106 should be, the room underneath the victim's room. Oh, okay, so 206 is the crime scene, so, wait. So, the room doesn't exist? Yet, there was definitely a gunshot coming from that room. Okay, so we have a ghost here, why not a ghost or room? Missing stuff, missing coffee, missing like missing clothes or whatever was in the victim's briefcase don't even know if he wanted to stay here for a couple of, like a day i'm just gonna go with clothes like or maybe he had some valuables in there i don't know missing valuables a coffee cup a missing bullet as well like what how would the 
why would you take the bullet? I guess it's like you didn't want to, you don't want anyone to like know it came from the floor below, but how would you find the bullet that easily? I mean, assuming that like, the bullet would have went into the ceiling then. Yeah. The bullet's missing, the police would have found it, so you need a ladder. Or something. It's, hmm. And the hole in the floor I recently uncovered. Yeah. The hole went straight through the floor. I, I could swear I could see the room below if it wasn't so dark. I mean that there must be another room below. Why is there no room 106 door? Huh. Strange. Hmm. No, oh, I was thinking I was thinking of this room differently. Like I'm assuming this is our room? Door from room 202, my room. And the room across the hall, Tennessee Vicks. Is that door all the way down there? Oh yeah, there was a person down the hallway we saw, like the very end. Is that the the victim's room? I'm assuming if that's it, then that could have been the culprit like looking out for what happened? Or no, the victim died from a gunshot, so was it the victim looking around or the culprit or the victim and the culprit could have been there talking to each other, and then Maris came for room service. That's why they ordered two cups of coffee. But then, why did the culprit, I guess, suddenly hide? And actually, another thing to think about. Hmm. What was it? So the coffee cup is... Like, it's like, as the bellboy would put it, Mr. Maplethorpe's favorite. Alright. I guess that makes sense. Okay. So, that obviously points to Maplethorpe being the, like, I guess, the prime suspect. Yeah, you know, like, the gun, the unique ammo, like, it's a cannonball, like a small, like, uh, yeah, like a small iron ball, whatever, it, whatever that kind of ammo is called. And all that. I'm assuming, like, the family hasn't, you know, reloaded the gun since then. After that horrific incident in the past, leading to the ghost story. So, the gun probably was used by Mr. Maplethorpe, but there were two cups of coffee in the room. So, obviously, like, like the victim wanted to talk to Maplethorpe? Assuming. So, they're acquainted. I'm gonna go down this whole line of inquiries and assumptions and all that here. So then, hmm. If that was either, if that shadow at the end of the hall was like, quote unquote, the ghost or like the culprit or the victim, they were like, keeping watch? Wait, I just remember something. Mr. Maplethorpe wasn't in the room at the time. Like, everyone, like, all the guests in Phoenix went into the room after the gunshot, and Mr. Maplethorpe went into the, like, room by the door. So he was not in the room this whole time. So. He could have been downstairs. I didn't explain how, like, the room downstairs, okay. Assuming, like, he, like... He was the one with the gun downstairs, I'm assuming. Wait, wait, why did the Maplethorpe carrying the gun around then? Why was he carrying a gun around the f like on the first floor? The victim was carrying a gun too. That isn't Huh. Hmm. We definitely need to find that f how to get into that first room. And I think I might have a way to do so. But I want to look through the crime scene again, just to be sure. 
Hmm. Okay, so looking at the outlet set up, it's, I guess there's this little dresser table over here. So that's a huge poster bed, yeah. So like, hmm. If we're going with the the idea that Maplethorpe is the killer here, then he was downstairs. But then, hmm. Then there's the whole mystery with Vic Barrows and the bandage plaster's nose. Huh. He can be another contender. Yeah, he's gonna be another contender, but that goes with the whole thing about the unique ammo thing I had in my mind, so. Hmm. And there's no way else to hide in this room. And wait. Was. Wait. Either way, it doesn't really make much sense. So, like, okay, there's a ghost in this room. Vic Barrows has a plaster in his nose, and if we're going to assumption that Maplethorpe is going to be the killer here, since, you know, flintlock pistol, unique ammo, he was downstairs, like, you know, on the first floor in the nursery room, like, I'm assuming, however that, however that exists, however we're going to get in there, because, like, obviously it has to exist, just, I mean, it just has to, then, who the heck was the ghost? Was there someone in here or not? Was Vic Barrows in here? And for that matter, like, if we're going to the, like, the victim ordered cups of coffee, like, one of them was Mr. Maplethorpe's favorite, then the victim, Mr. Maplethorpe, were acquainted? And going by that assumption, since there's someone else in the room, as evidenced by the, uh, the ghost, as the mayor's put it, then that means someone else is in here. But going with, the, going with that line of logic with, you know, if, assuming that Maplethorpe was downstairs, like, aiming up at the ceiling to kill who the victim was since they're acquainted for whatever reason with pinpoint somehow accuracy to shoot up through the ceiling and into the guy's uh, head away from the bed and into, like, solid ground, then, like, what? And... If we're going with the idea that Vic Barrows was the person in this room and he was the ghost, quote unquote, Miss Maris saw, then that means that Vic Barrows was acquainted with the victim. We don't know his client. Maybe the victim was his client. That could fit with what, what Greason said about we don't know much of the victim. That leads to, like, like hmm, motive-wise for, like, okay, so the victim wanted to hire a ghost hunter, a ghost hunter who's not worth his salt in any manner, like, he doesn't even know who the, oh my god, the ghost is, I'm still not over that. Why? Hmm. Is this really Scooby-Doo where I'm, uh, they're trying to get rid of the ghost of this, this hotel and I'm, uh, uh, the ghost, and maybe that's why, like, <laughs> Maplethorpe wanted, to, wanted him gone and dead? bit drastic. Scooby-Doo villains are always like, you know, like roundabout ways. I, I'm gonna put on this costume and just, I'm gonna scare all the locals away, right? <laughs> like, this obviously is the right answer, right? Now there's still a lot of bl blank holes. A lot of, a lot of. From the looks of it, there's no one really behind the room. I was thinking maybe hide on the curtains, which I guess you could, but obviously it'll leave like, you know, a very noticeable shape. Yeah, I'm pretty sure maybe someone would have noticed. Or they could have hid under the bed. Hmm. No, I don't think so. I'm assuming that, like, like there's no, like, n I guess, what is the word I'm looking for? No, uh, noteworthy things behind us. Like, this is, like, the thing, like, this is the entirety of the room. There's no other way to hide. There's no wardrobe or any, like, other furniture in this room. It's just this. If we're going with that, then... Whoever else is in the room, whoever is the ghost, could only have hid under the bed. Then, once everyone left, like, you know, to sleep, waiting for the police to arrive the next day, then that means... The person... So, it had to be someone who's not in the lineup. Like, you know, ah, oh, that's gonna be a thing. That would be the question of the guests then, but... Even then, I don't know if everyone remembers who was there, like, who was, like, you know, amongst the guests and that. Ugh. 
I'm just going to question each and every single guess, but... But since Brisbane, like, talked to all the guests, then... No one saw anything in the ordinary, so... Literally everyone was there, so... There's an outsider? That doesn't make... It doesn't make sense how much I look at it now. It's weird. Like, what was it? I just think another thing. So, like, there's no other way out of this room, like, as the... I think it was Snow mentioned it? I think how Snow mentioned it, there's only one way... I think it was Snow or Brisbane. There's only one way... I think the Bellboy actually mentioned it as well. There's only one way out of this room. And that's through the door. And I think they said that the windows could not be opened at all. Could not be. Plus, besides that fact, this is on the second floor of the building. Wait. I'm gonna bring some of the garden. Wait. Oh, okay. I need to check that out when we're back. Let me get, go back there. But so the windows were bolted, but like, hmm. That would be like, I guess either. Is there a way to get up there? I, oh, I definitely need to check. So, okay, hon. Huge windows through which the morning light is practically pouring into the room. The only open part appears to be a small section near the top. Uh, it's, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's way too small, and I, I don't think you can fit up there, but... Huh, okay, so I don't think there's... I really need to check out the, the garden area and look. That elevator. Okay, all the way down to the ground floor. First floor? Eh. First floor, second floor, third floor. Red fish, blue fish, two fish. Ding dong, bing bong. Okay, to the lounge. Then to the garden. Ah, hmm. I was gonna say, like, there was vines everywhere, the place. Like, maybe they could have gone up to the, you know, the third floor, or the second floor, quote-unquote, here. Like, to the victim's room, so, like, well, the windows were barred, too, so, like, yeah, so they couldn't have gone up to, like, um, uh, second floor for that. Like, gone, doors looking for more ghosts. He's not here, so, hmm. Maybe he went back to his room. Something bothers me about him. He seems very... Passive about the murder. Is he even aware of the crime? That's hmm. And there's a bunch of vines here. Oh, I was thinking that maybe it could be like some here. Oh, we can look at. Oh, hmm. I still into the victim's room. Two is six. Oh, that's it. Wait, so then it must be the window to room two one oh six. Something about the windows is bugging me. I get the feeling there's something that shouldn't be here. Wait a minute. Below 206 is a window is the window for room 106. There was no room 106. Wait. So that means... The room was completely just... Boarded off entirely. That definitely implicates Mablethorpe? Even more? Like, way much more. He wore the entire thing up. Well, wait. If he was in the room at the time, and he shut up, for whatever reason, if that was him, like, the whole place is under construction. Well then, since the whole place is under construction, like, anyone could have, like, you know, the temperament to, like, you know, carry around bricks and that, but... You need, like, wallpaper there, like, uh, Vic, Victor, Vic Barrows or Maplethorpe could, like, board it off for whatever reason or another. Maybe that's the reason, another way he's re reason why he's testifying that I'm, uh, there's the bullet hole in the ground. Wait, it was police tape covering over the bullet hole. Did the police even know about the bullet hole? I don't think they do. Wait, so then why is Maplethorpe being called to th testify? I was gonna think, like... No. They're doing construction on the first floor. So... You don't do construction in the middle of the night for this kind of stuff. So somehow, from the day before... The day now, somehow, or 
somehow they went into the room. Like, maybe a secret past or whatever. I don't know. Somehow they went to the... Whoever the, the culprit went into the floor below, shot upwards, and that killed the victim. And then... The door's completely, you know, gone. Huh. There was no room 106. Huh. So why is this window here? Unless there really is a room 106. Mmm. I need to get up there and check it out, but how? Do we go back into the, ho the house and, like, Start having a fun old time with a mobile paper. Don't don't worry about it. Like the first floor is still having renovations. We can we can get by it, right? Right? Yeah, right. There's a drain pipe over there. I could climb in and peer through the window. Oh, we're literally doing this. Hey, it's surprisingly this is surprisingly easy to climb. That means it's, they could have went in here. Here it is, the window of room 106. Damn it. Net curtains. I can hardly see inside. Oh well. Don't knock until you've tried it, I suppose. Ooh. Hmm. I think we're gonna enter the the room from here, but we'll leave that we we'll leave that exploration of that room for next time. Ooh boy. So like obviously there's gonna be something in there. Well there has to be at least something. This is the room where I guess the, the real culprit was, for whatever reason. The bowl came from here, and all that. It's looking... Hmm. It's looking more like Maple Port by the second, it looks like. That's gonna do a weird turnabout thing. It's actually Vic Barrows or whatever. Like, he does have a plaster in his nose where that came from. <sighs> Can't think of a reason to think the top of my head, like, what cause of that kind of injury. Maybe he really did, like, fall over on his bend, like, you know, hit, 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 hit his nose, like, that hard. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, I love this case so much. Oh, I love this. Like, I was having trouble thinking about it before, but I think this is kind of mysteries called, like, technically a locked room mystery. I don't know why. I don't, like, I know I heard about those. But for some reason, it didn't seem to quite fit here. Hmm. I guess it does. I guess, like, another way I'm thinking of other cases that revolve around, like, um, uh, very tight situations as well. And somehow the culprit managed to get in and out without, you know, being seen or noticed in that kind of way. Like, it's not always a locked room. I guess in this case, it's it, it really isn't a technical locked room. But there was someone watching the only in and out entrance so i guess it could technically be a locked room unless you can just prove that witness but oh i always love those it's like you're just trying to figure out the movements of the killer and like you know how the whole events played out instead of like blindly just going like i'm uh okay so this is how he died uh you're the killer boom eh that weird thing. I love it when we go to the go down the whole line of logic and deductions and all that. I love that so much. That's why I love this case so much. It's honestly great. Oh, I love the atmosphere here too. Oh, that ghost story from last episode I didn't sell that for you. For y'all. Oh, I'm just feeling giddy just going through all this all over again. It's really fun. It's really fun. I'll leave the exploration of this room, just seem to be the cornerstone of the entire of our whole turnabout for this whole case next time. So, for a fun time to watch as I am playing this, see you next time, a time may be, and I all hope you fantastic day.